Hey everyone, Shane here with eToro.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the ARC 350 series trailer jack. This is what our jack's going to look like. This is going to be an extreme off-road jack. And why they determine an off-road jack is the durability of it, how it's made, the wheels, and the adjustability. It's going to be steel construction. It's going to have a zinc coating on it. 660 hour salt spray rating, which makes it good for uh, anybody using it on the coastal areas. Uh, if you ever had any type of metal that didn't have a coating on it, uh, you know how fast it rusts uh, because of the salt in the air. Uh, what's nice about this, and when you compare it to some of the other jacks, is being an off-road jack, we're able, actually able to use this with the wheels down and move our trailer around. We don't actually have to lift it up. So when you compare it to some of the other ones, other types of jacks out there, they're not able to do that. There's a setting on there that when you lower the jack to that setting, we can roll our jack or roll our trailer around to get it positioned in our driveway. Maybe we put it in a garage and we need to get the tongue over a little bit where our vehicle isn't able to do that. We can actually take it and roll it over up against the wall if we want to. Or, for instance, being an off-road jack, let's say our trailer is sitting somewhere where the ground's a little bit soft and we weren't, we're not able to get our truck back to hook it up to the trailer to pull it out. We can actually keep our wheel down. We can leave our truck on solid surface, hook a strap to it, maybe a winch, and we can actually pull our trailer up to our vehicle. This jack is actually gonna have a 770 pound static load limit. Uh, the trailer we have it on here is 24 foot tri-tune. Uh, the tongue weight is about 550 pounds. So you can see this jack does very well for holding up that amount of weight. Come down here, we'll take a look at our wheels. Our wheels are gonna be six and a half inches by an inch and a half. Steel wheels, powder coat finish, they're going to have an off-road rubber on them. When you compare them to some of those jacks that have plastic wheels, if you ever tried to roll it across a concrete, it may have a little bit of gravel in it. It's a little bit difficult. With these, we don't have to worry about that. It's going to roll right over that gravel. You'll notice the holes here. This is so you can position the wheel when you raise it up and uh, lock it onto the frame. You can position the wheel however you have it mounted. So it will actually lock into place with this pin. And what that does, is it keeps the wheel from spinning around. Again, if you have a standard jack, those wheels tend to spin around and they can potentially get damaged by any debris that may be falling or coming up from underneath the vehicle. So you'll notice these holes here. This is our pin adjustability. This is gonna give us a little bit of extra movement in our jack. For instance, if we, uh, get to a spot where our, our wheel needs to go a little bit farther down. We can actually pull these pins and we can slide our jack down to lower it down a lot less cranking we're gonna have to do. By doing that, you simply pull this pin up and it allows you to slide that. Now, the total adjustability here from our center pivot point at our lowest to our center pivot point at our highest gives us five and a half inches. The pin itself is gonna be a dual pin, spring loaded. So for instance, if we, let's say we don't have it locked in place, you can see it's automatically gonna lock into place once it hits the correct holes. The pin handle is gonna have a nice rubber coating it's to help with grip. Makes it a little bit easier than just a bare piece of metal. If we rotate our jack down, and you can see we can spin that in all directions, so we'll be able to lock it in any position really that we want to. Our locking mechanism for that, you can see, very nice shaped handle, makes it easy to hold grab onto. It's going to have a single pin, spring loaded again. It's going to do the same thing that our adjustable pin would do. Simply just pull it. Once it finds the hole, it's gonna snap back into place. Another nice feature with this, is this is gonna be our crank handle. What's neat about it is it's magnetic. So once we fold our jack up, we're not you know, wanting to use it or even when it's down, we simply pull this off. We can put it in our glove box and it's ready to go for the next time. We don't have to worry about losing it. Uh, if you have a, a, a standard jack, what tends to happen is when these handles are on, when the jack is folded up, this handle just hangs down. Sometimes it can flap around and uh, 
what can happen is that handle can get caught on anything. Again, debris coming from underneath the vehicle could hit that handle and cause some damage that may have to, uh, you may have to replace the jack. The grip on the handle, you can see how it's kind of tapered. This makes it easy to grab onto. Makes it easy to keep your hand from sliding off. Unlike the other jacks where they're just, you know, a flat piece of plastic, uh, there's no taper to it. So, you know, if your hands are a little bit wet, potentially they can slide off. Here, again, tapered, because it's a nice solid grip on the handle to make it a little bit easier when cranking the jack up and down. Now I'm gonna give you a few measurements of adjustability that this thing has. At our lowest pin setting from the ground is gonna be nine inches, and that's at our pivot point in the center. The highest pin setting with our jack fully extended from the ground center is 21 and a half inches, which gives us a total of 12 and a half inches of adjustability. Now, as far as being able to move our jack, there is a maximum height marked on the tube. And if you look right here, it'll tell you maximum movement height. You'll see this line right here. We need to lower our jack or retract our jack down to that spot. Now your adjustable pin setting, it doesn't matter which setting it's in, it can be in any of them. As long as the jack is lowered to this mark, the trailer can be moved around on the wheels. With our jack retracted to our movable mark, our pin adjustment at the highest setting from the ground to center, which is our pivot point, we're looking at 18 and a half inches. If we moved our pin down to the lowest setting, still in our movable mark, from the ground to that lowest setting, we're looking at 13 and a half inches. Now you might be asking yourself, why do I need to know the measurements of the adjustability pin when I'm moving the trailer? Well, if your trailer tongue is sitting below or a little bit high, this allows you to adjust that to get it flat because it's gonna make it a little bit easier to move it around when the trailer is flat. That way if the nose is dipping, it's not nose heavy. If it's up, it's not back heavy. Now that we've taken a look at some of the features, let's walk through how to get it installed. To start your installation, when you get your jack, you're gonna to have to install the wheels. This bolt that runs through here is gonna have four bearings on it and three washers. You're gonna put a bearing in each side of each wheel and then a flat washer is gonna go in between the bracket in the bearing in between the two wheel bearings and then in between this outside bracket and this this bearing once you have your bolt in tighten it down you want to make sure you're not over tightening you want to make sure the wheels are still going to be able to spin once you get that done we can move on and get it mounted onto our trailer frame next we need to determine how we're going to place the plate itself um, this way is going to be for your uh, smaller frames. If you have a larger frame, uh, six inches, you can spin this to where your bolt holes are a little bit more spread out. We're actually going to be using it this way. What we want to do is we want the, our bolts that are going to be running through here to be as close to the frame rail on top and bottom as possible. Our frame rail is actually three inches wide here. Um, so we're going to have to be, we're going to be using some longer bolts. The bolts that come in the kit are going to be for a two inch frame. What we need to do is we need to find, determine which holes we're going to be using on our bracket. So what I have found is with these jacks, typically you're going to have one showing at the top. And once you get the bracket on, we'll go ahead and put a nut on to hold it in place. Then we can check our bottom hole and make sure we're as close as we can get. And then we can make any adjustments necessary. One thing that I wanted to mention and I forgot to, is you notice how these brackets are facing. You want the flat side against the frame rail. Once you get all your hardware installed, you're gonna come back and tighten everything down. Once you have all your hardware tightened down, you're ready to go. It's gonna do it for a look at the ARC 350 series trailer jack.